this is Jared from 3C's Recreation and I've got Braxton helping me today. We're going to do the steel oil pump gear set on a 2020 and newer four stroke beta motorcycle. This happens to be a 2021 430 race edition. It's a really simple job and I'll walk you guys through what we have here on the table. Beta is awesome. They give you uh, directions right on their website, on the consumer website. So you guys all have access to these. I just I always print stuff off when I'm doing a job. This is the steel oil pump gear set. We'll open that in a second. And I just have some basic tools already on the table. Um, we got a spot for our coolant to drain into. We've got a spot for our transmission oil to drain. And then uh, we're gonna just run new Motul trans oil and we're just gonna put new Motul coolant back in the bike. Uh, so the first thing we can do here is we'll open this kit up. And just to show you guys exactly what you're going to get. So when we open this, the main thing you'd want to make sure is there's a gasket in here. You don't want to, that's why it's in a harder box. And then it's pretty simple. If you have an older bike, um, say like 2012 through 20, I don't know, like 2015, 2016, there's going to be three gears. So make sure you buy the right kit for the right year of the bike. The newer bikes only have two gears that we're going to replace. And then this is our new tabbed washer uh, for the clutch basket. So um, these are the pieces that come with the kit. The first thing that we're going to do is we need to remove our skid plate. That way we can drain the oil. And then this is our coolant drain here. So we'll do a couple first steps. You want to make sure you pull the right drain plug. The front one is the engine oil. And the rear one is the transmission oil. On this job, we're just doing the transmission oil. So back here, this is the drain plug that we're shooting for in the newer four strokes. Again, if it's an older bike, your drain plugs a um, little different location. So this bike does not have a ton of time on it. You can see how clean that oil is coming out of there. But there is some stuff on the drain plug. So with this bike being newer and Tom only riding it probably like seven hours so far, it's probably a good time to do the first gear oil change anyway. So. We'll get this magnetic plug cleaned up before we stick it back in and torque it. So a simple way to catch the majority of the coolant is we're gonna get our bin ready. And the cap is still on the radiator up top. So what I'll do is I'll pop this first. And you're not gonna get a ton of coolant to come out right away. And that's kind of nice. So with the radiator cap still on, this is what you'll see. And then now as I release the cap, it makes it nice. It kind of you can control when it's going to pour out. So I'm unscrewing the cap off the top of the radiator now. We'll get it all the way off the top, and we'll just let this drain the rest of the way. Now that the oil is drained and the coolant is drained, I highly recommend putting both of these back in and torquing them now. That way you don't forget about it later, because we are done with this plug and we are done with the drain plug on the oil. So torque this to the spec. And then underneath it here, this is 15 foot-pounds for your drain bolt on the transmission plug. And while that's screwing, I should mention that you always want to clean uh, your surface really well. So with this bike having minimal time on it, there's not much dirt on it. But if your bike's been ridden a lot, I would highly recommend uh, taking this thing out and uh, pressure washing it or cleaning it. So now both of our drain plugs are reinstalled. So what we need to do next is pull this rear brake pedal off so we can pull the whole cover directly off the side. And to do that, we have uh, one cotter pin on the back of this, and then we just have the one bolt, and then you have your spring here. So we'll remove this next. The next thing we'll do, now that our brake is out of the way, we're gonna get this cover off. The goal is to leave this clutch cover attached to the inner uh, clutch housing cover. And we're also gonna leave the water pump attached to this as well. That way we don't rip this gasket or ruin this uh, gasket O-ring in here. So to do that, we're gonna leave this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt all back on. The rest of them are all through bolts that go all the way into the inner case there. So we're gonna take off these uh, top ones all the way around here. So. We'll do that now. And 
And the next step is going to be just popping this off of here. There's a couple tabs. Oh, first we, we pull our drain pan back over because there's going to be some oil on the bottom of the gear side here. So we've got a tab here that we can kind of use. And we have a, another tab over here that we can kind of use. But we want to be careful when we're using that. And then a last one up on top. So we will pull this cover off now. So this one came off super easy. This bike is not that old. Um, and you can see that gasket's perfect. We're not even gonna have to reuse or uh, use our new gasket. We'll save that one. So this is the this is what it's gonna look like on the inside here. And what our goal is is to get to these two uh, gears here. This is what we're what we're shooting for today. So obviously, if it was just this one, it'd be super easy. But all we have to do is remove our clutch basket so we can get to this back gear as well. With our cover out of the way, we're going to remove these six clutch springs. And I like to set stuff right, right in my cover. It's a nice little tray. With those out, we can now pull the clutch pack out. I like to try to grab as many as I can as an assembly. Because we're just going to put it directly back in. And they'll, they'll shift a little bit you know, like this, but at least we know the order because there are different colors of clutch plates and we have to make sure we put them back in like we're supposed to. So we're gonna set this down. And I usually use a pick tool. I can't get my fingers to get them all. And we're gonna keep pulling them off in the exact order they came off on. And I think we, we got them all, we're good. So they all came off without the pick tool. This is our throw out bearing assembly. We're gonna remove this as well. You really can't mess up putting this back in because this side is tapered for this to fit on. So you, you really can't mess that up when it's time to reinstall that. The next step is going to be getting the safety tabs away from our clutch nut here. So I'm going to use a little chisel and a little hammer and I'm going to pry these away. With the safety tab out of the way, we can now unscrew the clutch nut. We're also going to remove these inner sleeves as well. You just pull them straight out. And the reason for that is my clutch holding tool fits nicely into these little pockets. So I got those out now. And my Motion Pro tool on the back side of it has these nice round nubs that'll nicely fit down in there. And with those, those in there, it doesn't let it fit in there like I want it to. And then this is a 27 millimeter and it's normal thread. So wherever I stuck that, no, it's right here. So now we got the 27. And we're gonna wing this off. So now that's off. And just remember when we put this back on, we're gonna put some new Loctite back on here. We gotta remember to put our locking tab washer back in as well. With that off, we can now slide this whole assembly right out of the way here. So kind of pull out on it. And then there's a bearing in the back. I'm getting my fingers back there. And I'll show you guys. This little assembly here, I try to bring it all off as one. It doesn't matter if it comes off individually. Uh, I just like to assemble it back on the bike together. And this is where, when we're reinstalling this, we gotta make sure that this gear lines up with this oil pump here as well. So. We're gonna have to wiggle things when we reinstall this. So that's pretty much all the disassembly because now we have our gears right in front of us that we've been working toward. And I'll get this kit opened up and we'll, we'll show you guys how to put those on. So you'll see we just opened the kit. You can see how stepped the back of this upper gear is, the thicker one. Obviously that needs to go in. And then the smaller gear, it's got this little, when I pull it off you'll see, but this little T-like thing that, that spins it. So that's how these gotta go back on. The first one is just your regular snap ring. And if you have luck on the first try. Look at that, got it off. So here's our snap ring. And then pay attention because there's, there could be on the back side, there's a washer and we're gonna leave that one on there. We don't need to take it off. You can see that step in the back of this gear. So 
So we're gonna just put this gear down. I carried the washer over, there was a washer on the front of it as well. We'll slide this one back on there. Put that back in. And we'll just use our snap ring tools again. Now that my hands are all oil. And I'll reinstall this. The bottom one, it's not a normal snap ring, it's just like a C-clip. So with this one, we're gonna use a flathead screwdriver with a smaller head. This one might not be small enough. Let me grab one smaller here. Got a better, smaller screwdriver for this. You wanna keep like a couple fingers on the top so that clip doesn't go pinging out. And I moved the drain pan back just so if it did go pinging, it wasn't gonna land in there. So there's our C-clip. I'm gonna pull it straight off. I'm gonna turn it, you can see like how and I'll show you when I pull this off of here. I turned it so this little spacer will stay stay in. If it was turned, it could slide out the bottom. So this is now off. And this is our new steel one that we're gonna slide in. And th this little thing can slide from side to side. So make sure it's pretty much centered there. And then we'll just slide the new one back on. Get our upper gear lined up with it. And then now we're gonna put our little C-clip back on, which sometimes is a little bit of a challenge. We'll try a set of pliers, see how that helps us. Uh, maybe just go over to the side a little bit with that. Nice, sweet. All right, so now that that's back on, like I said, the next thing is gonna be us lining up our uh, clutch here. All right, so we're gonna slide our outer clutch basket on, and like I said, keep this assembly together. And we're gonna slide it on. And we have to make sure two different gears line up. We got this bigger gear here, and our oil pump gear in the back, and that actually slid right on nicely. Our inner basket, we are gonna put this little washer in there. And then we're gonna take this little thing, inner basket, and we gotta get the splines to line up on that as well. So if I can get that to line up and push on. And we got our new locking tab washer. And you can see one spot here is flat on this basket and that's where this little elbow has to sit on. The rest of these are not notched out like that. So we need to have that sit directly on that one little spot. And then we're gonna re-loctite this and we'll torque this down. We will bend our locking tab collars over now. Just a pair of pliers here. Okay, so our locking tab is on. We can now insert our little cups on the outsides of the inner basket, and we'll reinstall our clutch plates. It's important when you're installing your clutch plates that you uh, put the blue ones on the outside. I'll hold this up real quick as I'm doing those. Let's see, let's find the, oh, right here. So here's our blue marking on the back one, and then our blue marking on the outer one. So I took them off and, as an assembly and just laid them down, so I can just put them back up in. So we'll get our cups in, and then we'll get our clutch plates back on as well. Now that all of our clutch plates are installed, we can go with the throwout bearing and the push rod. And like I said, tapered smaller end is toward us. So I'll push that in. I'll actually clean up some of this Loctite a little bit better here. You know, it's got our throwout assembly. I'll stick that in there. And then we have our, our clutch cover here, the outer. So I'll stick this in. And then now we just have our, our assemblies that we're gonna throw back in. You've got the spring, the spacer, and the screw. There's gonna be six of these. Kinda of wanna put them in evenly, so we'll throw these in here next. You don't wanna over tighten these, so when I had that tool, I barely went in with them. These are only 10 Newton meters on these, so you just wanna give them a nice little tighten. So with this bike being so new, uh, our outer cover gasket was good. So we're gonna reuse it. Um, we're just gonna slide this back on. We've cleaned up the outside of the outer gasket as well. So that's all cleaned up. So now we'll just slide this back on. Uh, we do have, just to make note, 
there's a little dowel pin here and a dowel pin down here as well. They stayed in the inner case half. So without the kickstart kit in this bike, there's really nothing on this side. And we just have our water pump gear here. It's got a line up in there. So just be careful when you slide it in. We didn't spin that at all, so quickly. I should, yeah, ours just went right back in because we didn't spin that water pump at all. So it's nice. Now we'll just retorque all of our outer bolts and we'll do that next. And again, all these bolts, I did not use the power tool to tighten down. We're gonna do it by hand. And then a uh, torque wrench as well. So we'll get these torqued up and then we'll get our, our rear brake pedal put back on. Okay, we can reinstall our brake now. We'll slide this in the back and we'll use our bolt and our nut there. Actually, what I like to do, I like to install that spring first. I'm not fighting with that later. So if we install that there, and get the upper part of it to go in there. That way the spring's already installed. Now I'll throw the bolt through with the nut on the back side. And tighten this down. We've got a new cotter pin here. We're gonna grab one out of this little bin. And we'll slide the pin through here because there's a cotter pin on the back side of this. So we'll slide that in. Get our cotter pin in here. The next step we'll do is get our skid plate reinstalled. These newer bikes call for 850 cc's of oil. We like to run the Motul stuff here at our shop. This is the Trans Oil 10W40. And we'll unscrew the filler cap and we'll clean that up. This, like I said, this bike doesn't have hardly any time on it, so it's super clean everywhere still. And the Motul stuff gives you a, a little gauge here, so we're going to stop with 150 cc's left. We'll get this filled, and then we'll go right to the coolant. Okay, so we run the Motul Motocool Expert coolant in our bikes. To keep it consistent, I'm just going to put this back in. I don't think there's anything wrong with the stock coolant, but I'd rather keep all my bikes in the same. So we'll get this put in there next. So now that the coolant's in, I would recommend starting the bike, let it run for like three minutes, let the water pump circulate through, get any bubbles to the top, and recheck that. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching our video. If you want beta parts, we are a beta dealer. Give me a call. We can ship anywhere in the USA. Typically, parts are getting free shipping as well if you hit a certain dollar amount. Again, Jared at 3Cs Recreation, and thanks for tuning in.